Assalamu alaikum brothers and sisters. Thank you for joining me for the 24th episode in my series on the most important women in the life of Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Today's segment is on the last wife of our Rasul, Maria al-Kibtiya. May Allah be pleased with her. She was a Coptic and the mother of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam's last son. After the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, had married Maimuna, radiallahu anha, the following ayat was revealed. It is not lawful for you, O Muhammad, to marry more women after this, nor to exchange them for other wives, even though your beauty, her beauty is pleasing to you. Except those whom your right hand possesses as maidservants, and Allah is always watching over everything. Al-Azza, ayah 52. After this, the Prophet, peace be upon him, did not marry again. When, however, the Christian ruler, Makawis of Egypt, sent him two Christian slave girls who were sisters as a gift in response to the Prophet's letter inviting him to embrace Islam. This was also sent with a fine robe and some medicine. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, accepted one of the slave girls, Maria, into his household. He gave her sister, Serene, to a man whom he wished to honor, Hassan ibn Thabit, radiallahu anhu. He accepted the robe, but he returned the medicine with the message, My sunnah is my medicine, explaining that he did not need their form of curing. Maria Rajulaha Anha was born in Upper Egypt to a Coptic father and a Greek mother and moved to the court of the Mukaukis when she was still very young. She arrived in Medina to join the Prophet's household just after Prophet Muhammad وسلم, returned from the treaty with the Quraysh, which was contracted at Al Hudaybiyah. When Maria radiallahu anha gave birth to a healthy son in the ninth month of Al Hijra, this was the same year that his daughter Zainab radiallahu anha had died, and the Prophet, peace be upon him, named his new son Ibrahim, after the ancestor of both the Jews and the Christians. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, from whom all of the prophets came after him, were descended. Unfortunately, when he was only 18 months old, Ibrahim became seriously ill and passed away. This was similar to the other two sons born to Khadija Rajulahu Anha, who died in infancy. Even though he knew that his small son would go to Jannah, the Prophet وسلم, could not help but shed some tears. When some of his companions asked him why he was weeping, he would reply, It is my humanness. As Ibrahim's body was being buried, the sun was eclipsed and it grew dark and gloomy. Some people thought this was connected with Ibrahim's death, but the Prophet, peace be upon him, soon clarified this. The sun and the moon are two of Allah's signs, he said. They are not eclipsed because of anyone's birth or death. When you see these signs, make haste to remember Allah in prayer. Although the Kafirun used to mock the Prophet Muhammad وسلم, because he had no sons and say that he was cut off, Allah made it clear in Surah Al Kawthar, ayahs 1 through 3, that the station of the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was far above that of any other man. In the name of Allah, the merciful, the compassionate, surely we have given you Al Kawthar. So pray to your Lord and offer sacrifice. Surely he who mocks you is the one cut off. And in Surah Al-Azab, Ayah 40, Allah says, Muhammad is not the father of any man amongst you, but he is the messenger of Allah and the seal of the prophets, and Allah has knowledge of all things. Maria Rajulahu Anha was honored and respected by the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and his family and the companions. She spent three years of her life with the Rasul until his death and died five years later. For the last five years of her life, she remained a recluse and almost never went out except to visit the grave of the Rasul or her son. After her death, Omar ibn al-Khattab led the prayer over her and she was buried. Now this story completes our look at the wives of the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. So please... Join me tomorrow as we take a few days to look at the lives of some of the Prophet's closest daughters. Until then, inshallah. Assalamu alaikum.